In this video, I'm going to go over Figeli's new synchronous control boards. These are great for moving multiple linear actuators in unison together. This smaller board is good for moving two linear actuators in synchronous together, so for applications such as a hatch door or a tonneau cover over the back of a truck. This larger board is good for controlling between two and four linear actuators, so you may want to use four if you are doing a desk lift or other various home automation projects. In this video I'll focus on this board, but the same principles apply for the smaller board as well. It's important to note when you're buying your linear actuators that these boards are only compatible with our optical series 200 pound and 400 pound and our bullet series 36 caliber and 50 caliber. Any other actuators don't have the correct sensors inside them to be compatible with this synchronous control board. To begin we're going to want to make the appropriate connections. This first double pin is for the input so you could use a button or a remote, a remote control system and I'll go over how to connect both of those. This second pin is for inserting power, the 12 volts DC, and then these remaining four blocks are for your actuators. You'll notice that on here we've got five wires. The two wires are going to be for the motor themselves and then the three remaining wires are for the sensor. With the bullet linear actuators there's six wires as it uses a quadrature encoder which means that there's four wires for the sensor instead of only three. These plugs are fairly easy to remove by hand so I'm just going to go ahead and take them out and then use a flathead screwdriver to loosen the screw terminals. While I make these connections, I'm going to overlay a circuit diagram of how to connect these up. So I've gone ahead and made the first couple of connections. You'll see that there's two wires coming out of here. And as per the circuit diagram, I'm going to connect these two wires up to the toggle switch. You only need to use one side of the toggle switch. You can just ignore these other three pins. So I'm putting it on either end, and then in the middle, I'm going to connect up this red wire that's connected to the 12 volt input pin, and it's going to go right to the center here. So now when I toggle the switch in either direction, it's going to send a 12 volt signal down these lines into here, and then the circuit board will control the direction of your linear actuators moving in or out. These other two wires are going to connect up to our 12 volt battery later or if you have a 12 volt uh, AC to DC converter you can connect, them, connect it to that. However it's important that we don't connect the power until we've ma finished making all our different connections. If you're instead using the two actuator control board these two wire connections can just be substituted in right here the exact same way. I'm going to skip over the wiring process here just because it's a fairly mundane and monotonous task um, but you can see the table overlaid on the screen now for how to make the different wire connections. And here you see the finished connections. You'll note that this final pin is not connected because we're using the optical series linear actuator. If instead you're using the bullet actuator you'll need to use all six of these different pins. Today I'm using three of these linear actuators, so I'll go ahead and finish wiring up these last two blocks. This one over here will remain unconnected. It's important that if you're using less than four actuators, you start from the left side and you move to the right. As you can see, I've finished making all the different wire connections. I'm going to go ahead and just slide off this piece up here. Inside you'll see that there's two momentary switches, they're the silver squares with the red dots on top and then off to the right side there's two dip switches which is that red block with the two white up and down switches. 
The two red and white switches there, the dip switches, are for telling the control board how many linear actuators are connected. Obviously with this control board you're always going to have a minimum of two linear actuators connected because it doesn't make any sense to use a synchronous control board when you only have one, but you need to tell the control board whether you have these additional last remaining two connected. So in this case I have the third one connected but not the fourth. So on this first dip switch I'm going to leave that in the down position and then on this last one that's not connected I'm going to move that dip switch that's currently in the down position to the uh, upwards position. Now it's a little hard to see but you'll s hopefully notice that the leftmost dip switch is down and the rightmost dip switch is up. If you have uh, both of these like all four actuators connected, you'll want both of these dip switches down and then if you only have two linear actuators connected, you want both of those dip switches in the up position. If you're using this smaller two actuator control board, you can disregard everything that I just said as uh, we don't need to set the number of actuators that are connected because there's always going to be two connected. Now that we finally have everything connected and the dip switches have been set, I'm going to connect these two terminal leads to the 12 volt power supply. It's very important that you do not reverse the polarity because that can permanently damage the board. We're now going to want to calibrate the actuators to the control board. Essentially what this does is it fully retracts the actuators to the home position, the zero fully retracted mode, and then it's going to fully extend it and fully retract it. During this one actuation cycle it's going to count the number of pulses in the actuator and in this way the control board will be calibrated. To do this I'm going to push the home button which is the rightmost momentary switch here or if you're using the two actuator board it's also just the right switch here. So I'm just going to go ahead and press that once and you'll notice that all the actuators are attracting back. Now to finish off the calibration sequence, I'm going to push and hold the same button. The actuator is going to fully extend, pause, and then fully retract. The control board is now calibrated and when we want to move the actuators they'll all move in synchronous together. You might have noticed that during the calibration sequence this one retracted the fastest and this one was the slowest. That's nothing to worry about at all because during that calibration sequence they're not designed to move in synchronous. However you'll notice now that when I use this switch they'll all move perfectly in unison even if you put them under different loads. One other feature of this synchronous control box that I'll quickly touch on is the ability to program a memory height. So say you want to move the, all the actuators to the same height and instead of pushing the button and manually moving it there each time, what you can do is actually program the position using this leftmost button on the control board. Similarly, if you're using this smaller control board, it's again the leftmost button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the linear actuators to a position that I want to save as the memory height. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So let's say I want to save this as the new memory location height. What I'm going to do is push and hold this leftmost button 
and after a couple of seconds you notice that the relays inside there clicked and this green LED started flashing a couple of times. That means that it's now programmed. So if I go ahead and I move to a different position, And now instead of manually moving it back to that same location there, what I can do is push this button once and then release. And it automatically stops there. If you want to program a different height after that, uh, it's the exact same process. Move it to another location, press and hold the button and that'll overwrite the previous saved location. So what I've done here is connected up the remote control board. The green and blue wires are gonna be the signal user input lines and they're just gonna connect up just like the button did. And then the black and red wires from the remote control board are gonna get connected up to the input 12 volt power supply. You'll notice that uh, when I push the up button, the actuators are attracting, and when I push the down button, the actuators are extending. Uh, if you want to reverse the order of that, all you need to do is reverse the order of these green and blue wires.